everybody. Today we are going to get into our strain gauge lab, which again, the purpose of this, you have a master's in mechanics, you're starting to learn now about uh, strain gauges and Wheatstone bridges, but now we want to see, okay, can we experimentally measure, you know, strain of a material? So if you have, I don't know, a bridge, you know, a bridge and a strut, uh, and there's un some under some complex load, we can put our strain gauge on the material and measure that kind of mechanical response. Um, so we're connecting our mechanics with the uh, circuits and Wheatstone bridges in order to, again, we want to measure uh, we want to be able to measure essentially the stress strain curve uh, and get these kind of mechanical properties. So what strain are we in the plastic regime? Are we in the elastic regime? What is our material? How is it going to respond? Um, if you have a material that has micro cracks or welds uh, or something else going on, you know, typically to kind of see the extent, you'd have to do some fairly complex analysis. But instead, if you want to see, okay, what is the, you know, what's the strain response? We could put a strain gauge and a strain gauge rosette here. And we can measure, okay, near this micro crack, what is the strain state versus, you know, far away from the micro crack like over here. So that's the idea of what we're going to be doing today. So what we're going to do is we're going to be dealing with a cantilever beam uh, problem. So we're going to have a beam, aluminum 6061. We are going to put a strain gauge on the top. So one, we're going to do a strain gauge on the back side. Two, as we kind of note from our notation, we know this is our standard configuration. And we you know that our delta V naught over V I is equal to F over 4, epsilon 1 minus epsilon 2 minus epsilon 3 plus epsilon 4, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Oops, excuse me. Let's go ahead and get this guy off for a second. Doesn't like that when I. <laughs> um, so essentially, you're going to have the situation that looks like it on here. But, anyways, we'll get to that in a second. Now, this is what we're going to measure experimentally. So we are going to measure an output voltage we are going to be given that this V sub I is equal to 5 volts. We're going to be given that the gauge factor for the string gauges that we were going to utilize in this experiment is going to be equal to 2. And thus, we are going to we know that the strain in this arm and this arm are 0 because we just have our strain gauges. So we also know that we're going to be applying a load here. So that's going to be bending. So at the top of our beam, we know that epsilon 1 is going to be positive bending, V. And we also know that E2 it's going to be on the bottom, so that's negative bending right here. So our final expression becomes V naught over V I equals F over 2 E B. And luckily, we're going to be able to deduce, or actually we have an expression for our E B right here. Um, so we'll get back to that in a second. Again, you've seen this expression before in our notes. So P is our applied load, X, uh, or actually D or X here. Actually, X is the distance there. D is going to be the distance from your strain gauge right here. Uh, the distance from where the load is applied to where the strain gauge is applied here. So that's your D. E and then I is just your typical, uh, your moment of inertia, which is just this B H cubed or 12. So B is your base, which in this experiment is going to be 25 uh, millimeters. So 25 millimeters. The height or the thickness of our beam is going to be six millimeters. And with that, uh, we should be able to kind of figure everything else. E is your Young's modulus. We know that this material is uh, uh, aluminum 6061, so 69 times 10 to the 9 Pascal. You know, our Poisson's ratio is 0.3. Uh, and now, the one question that we have here, and the way that we run this experiment, actually, sorry, I've got a package. <laughs> I'll be back soon. <laughs> See you. Uh, I got a treadmill. I need to start running in this COVID uh, times. Anyways, um, so we know the base. We know the height. We know the material. Uh, you can kind of see the base indicated here, the height indicated here in this diagram. But one thing we don't know about is the load. And the way that we do this um, experimentally is we have uh, basically a micrometer where we kind of turn a screw and the screw goes down here, presses the beam and deflects it. But we don't know uh, the load that's applied at that kind of uh, distance uh, X here. So that's kind of the load here. We're applying, you know, uh, we're looking at some deflection. The load is actually being applied uh, right here. So the load's being applied, but again, it's just this screw. So the screw kind of pushes down on our uh, on our aluminum beam, and it deflects some amount of delta at that distance X. Now, we don't know what the force is or the load is um, at that distance X, but we know the deflection delta, because here it's just fixed by our kind of our screw and our micrometer. And we're going to apply delta displacements of 
0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 inches. So that's going to be the delta that we plug in. So we have an equation here for delta. So delta is going to allow us to solve. Again, we apply uh, the length of our beam, L, is 30.5 centimeters long. And this is all in the Mathematica notebook. Our x, where we apply essentially that load, uh, is going to be 25.5 centimeters. And we know, uh, as I just kind of mentioned, that displacement that we are going to observe from our kind of screw that we push down. So from that, we can actually solve for our load and then plug that back into our equation. And again, this is our theoretical, theoretical equation for our kind of strain. And we know, as we just derived it here, we have this expression. We know what's going to be our expression. This is just kind of, again, showing, um, again, unfortunately, because we're remote, we're not going to be able to kind of do this in person. But this is kind of the schematic, the experimental details. This is your Wheatstrom bridge and how you would configure it with the top strain gauge and lower strain gauge. So this would be on your circuit board here. These would be on your material. But again, you connect it back uh, onto your circuit board. And this is your expression for, again, the experimental, how we're going to figure out the experimental strain. So we're going to measure this delta V naught in volts. We have this parameter here. We have F, and that's it. So we're going to be able to calculate for that, you know, experimental strain here. So that's kind of the key idea that we're going to be uh, working with this in lab. So we have a half Wheatstone bridge configuration, the cantilever beam. We're going to apply a load P at some distance X, looking at displacements, deltas. These are not strains. These are deltas of 0, 0 0.1, and 2 inches. We're going to, again, use the information given in order to calculate our P, our load, from this equation. This equation is only to figure out our load, P. And then we're going to plug it into this uh, theoretical version of strain to figure out what is our, you know, this is our, you know, the theoretical equation for cantilever beam strain. Again, what are the cantilever beam assumptions? Massless, uh, rigid. That's not obviously the case uh, for, you know, this material. But again, you know, that's the theoretical expression. Uh, so we're going to solve for that value here. D is going to be the distance um, uh, from where your, uh, you know, again, the distance between where the load is applied and where the strain gauges are applied. In this lab, you'll see it in the Mathematica notebook, but it's going to be basically 25. Uh, so the, this total distance is 25 here, so 25.5 uh, centimeters. And the distance here is basically 9.5 centimeters. So when you do that, you just take that difference and you'll get that value of D. Um, so we do that, plug in for that expression, and then we measure the output voltage, and that's it. So here you can kind of read some, um, again, if you're interested, and especially for if you're doing senior design or if you're interested in kind of mechanics and materials, again, once we're back in person, I'd be happy to kind of demo this for you or you can kind of do this yourself. But you can uh, look at these uh Look at these kind of uh, basically procedural notes and kind of see how you actually uh, are going to kind of perform this lab. So if you need to get a sense and if it will help you with your report, please be sure to read these. Let me know if you have any questions. And next video, we're going to get into our Mathematica notebook and see how we're going to analyze and uh, form this data analysis for your last lab report. That's it. All right. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.